My talk today will be about myopia or short-sightedness. A person with short-sightedness will see clearly near objects, but far objects are blurred. By definition, myopia is a state of refraction with accommodation completely relaxed, parallel ray coming from an object very far will come to a focus in front of the retina. After focusing here, the rays will continue to reach to the retina. So each point in the object will appear here as a point, but on reaching the retina, a single point will be larger, it will be diffuse, so disilluminated, it will be blurred. As a result, the person will see a blurred image. To understand this, let's see this configuration. Here we have a slide projector that is focused at this level. So if you put a screen here, everything will be clear. If you remove the screen, and we have another screen here, the image here will be blurred. This is shown in this video. This is the first screen with clear image. On the removal, this is the back screen and the image is blurred. So this is what happened in the patient's eye. This is if it was a retina at the level in the vitreous and this is the actual location of the retina. Etiology can be due to axial, refractive or anterior dislocation of the lens. The emetropic eye has an axial length of 24 millimeters and a power of plus 60. This is suitable to get the image into the retina. But if the eye is longer with the same 60, the focus here will be in the vitreous cavity in front of the retina. This is known as axial myopia. Every one millimeter change in the axial length will result in three diopters error. The second is the refractive power, increase of the refraction. So instead of having an optical system of 60, if it's 61, the focus will be inside the vitreous cavity. This is a plus one lens, focus is at one meter, plus two focus is 50 centimeter, plus three focus is 33, and so on. So the higher the power of the lens, the closer the focus to the optical lens. So this is the emetropic eye with the power 60. If the power increase to 61, the focus will be in front of the retina. Refraction can be changed due to increase in curvature or change in the refractive index. Increasing curvature, as in cases of cratoconus, instead of having a normal curvature here, the central part of the cornea is bulging, more curved. This will increase the power of the cornea, hence the whole system is more powerful. Again, another example is anterior lenticonus. The central part of the anterior surface of the lens is cone-shaped. Uncontrolled diabetes will result in myopia. Explanation. Normally the lens has a power of plus 18. The nucleus is plus 24. The cortex in front and the cortex behind each is minus 3. So the total power of the whole is plus 18. If you have uncontrolled diabetes, patient will suffer of hyperglycemia so there will be more glucose in the aqueous. Glucose in the aqueous will find its way to get into the cortex and it's going to take water with it so there will be hydration of the cortex. Hydration of the cortex will result in decrease of the refractive index of the cortex hence the power of the cortex will be less so the total power of the lens will be more. The cortex is the negative part, so if the cortex is less negative, the total positivity will be more. 
for example if we say temperature is low it's minus 7 the next day it's warmer it's only minus 4 so this is less cool the same here if the coordinates can instead of being minus 3 it turn to be minus 2 only then the total power of the lens will be higher nuclear is closed this is another example it's a physiological process that occur above the age of 45 in which the fibers in the nucleus will start to lose water become sclerotic this will be associated with increase in the refractive index increase in the refractive index of the nucleus will result in increase of the power of the nucleus so the total power of the lens will be more the 24 will be 26 so the whole lens will be 20 plus instead of 18 nuclear screws will result also in a gray pupil the loss etiology is anterior dislocation of the lens if the crystalline lens moved forward the total power of the system will be more Keep in mind that a myopic system is a relatively strong system. In case of axial myopia, this long eye does not need all this 60, it needs less power. So 60 is relatively strong for this eye. While in case of refractive myopia, the actual power is higher than normal. There are different types of myopia. A simple myopia starts by the edge of puberty and stops by the end of this period of puberty and usually it doesn't exceed minus 6 diopters and is not associated with changes. On the other hand, degenerative myopia or progressive myopia or malignant myopia starts early and it goes on for the rest of life reaching higher and higher degrees and is associated with changes malignant changes or degenerative changes this is the correct word a last and a final type is congenital myopia normally children are hypermetrope and gradually hypermetropia decreases and by the age of six they become immetrope in congenital myopia the eye is myope as very early stages of life. What are the degenerative changes? Myopia is a degenerative condition in which the sclera is weak, so the eye gets larger and myopia appears. It's an axial myopia. This can be associated with such changes like temporal crescent, annular crescent, Posterior cephaloma, this is the normal eye, while this eye get bulging of the posterior part here, the sclera line by choroid and retina. So this is posterior cephaloma. It can be seen by B scan and also it can be seen by stereoscopic indirect ophthalmoscopy where you can see one sector of the fungus deeper than the peripheral sector. This can be associated with patches of corrigatin degeneration or corrigatin atrophy. As you can see here, there is sclerosis of the choroidal vessels, corrigatin disappears and large choroidal vessels are seen. Another example, patches of corrigatin degeneration, proliferation of phagocytes to engulf the dead cells. Another example, and another example of correlative degenerations. Distillated fundus or tegroid fundus is not a degeneration, it's just more pigmentation of the back surface of the eye. Fuchs spot. This is a disiform hemorrhage in the macular area. New vessels are formed under retina, causing such a problem of hemorrhage and later on scarring with marked affection of the central vision. Another example of problems is peripheral choroidal degenerations. 
peripheral means very anterior. This is the aura serrata, this is the cilia remobi. So changes occurs here, very anterior, very peripheral in the retina. It can take this form, we call it a lattice degeneration, can be patches of atrophy, and the problem if it is associated with holes, very thin melting out of the retina. If this is associated with liquefaction of the vitreous, fluid can get through this hole and start the process of retinal detachment. Another thing, high myopia can have detachment of the posterior vitreous, so there will be condensation of fibrillae here, patient will suffer of musca, and also when the, vitre, when the eye moves, the vitreous will pull on the retina here on these attached areas, and start the patient will see photopsia, flashes of light. Other things can be complicated, cataract, open angle glaucoma, and squint. The main problem, the main complaint, is in this thing's far vision in cases of myopia. Patient can see clear near objects, but far objects are blurred. And this is what we discussed before, why the image is blurred, and also the image is larger. Now, far point and near point. In case of emetropia, if we start from the retina, rays will come out parallel to meet at infinity. So the far point is infinity. The far point is the conjugate point with the retina when accommodation is relaxed. In case of myopia, being a stronger system, the rays will come out convergent. So they will meet here at a point nearer than infinity. So the near point here is closer than infinity. The more the myopia, the closer the near point. So the definition of far point of punctum promotum, it is the conjugate point with the retina when accommodation is relaxed. Now we come to the optical correction of myopia. Object very far, parallel rays will focus in front of the retina. So we need to put a minus lens to diverge these rays so the rays will come to a focus on the retina. The more the myopia, the more the power we need to put in this lens. Where is the focus of this lens? These divergent rays, if we expand them posteriorly, this is the focus of this lens. This is the same eye. If we start from the retina, with no correction here, then the rays will come here to the far point of this patient. If you compare the yellow lines in the lower part with the blue lines in the upper part, you will notice that the correcting lens has a focal length coinciding with the far point of the patient. This is a principle for correction of all errors of refraction. We need to use a lens that has a focal length coinciding with the far point of the patient. Now, suppose we have a patient that his system is stronger with one diopter. So, rays coming from the eye will be focused here at one meter as if we have an emetrope and we get an extra lens but not in front inside his eye so the rays will focus here at one meter to correct such an eye you need to reduce the power with one so you need to put a minus lens with power minus one as you notice here the four point of the patient is coinciding with f of the lens Imagine that we have a system stronger than the emetrope by 5. So this is a myopia minus 5. It has a focal length. The far point, I'm sorry, the far point of this eye is 20 centimeters. As if emetrope was plus 5 inside. To correct such an eye, we need to use a minus lens of m minus 5. 
again with the focal length of this minus length is 20 centimeters. Now we come to the point of the effective power of glasses. Usually when we put glasses, the glasses are in front of the cornea by around 13 to 15 millimeters. If we change the position of the correcting lens to put it closer, this will affect the, effect, the power of the lens needed. As you notice here, if you move from this position closer, then we need to use a lens of a, long, a longer length, focal length. So the power of the lens should be less. Let's see it here. This is a myope of minus 1. The punctum remotum is 1 meter. It's 100 centimeter. If you put here a minus 1 lens, it is in front of the cornea about 14 millimeters, and it has a focal length of 100 centimeters. Now, if we change to a contact lens, so the contact lens here should have a focal length longer. It should be 101 and a half. So the power is less. In case of a small error, this minus change is minimal to affect and we don't need to make any adjustment. But see this example of a high myopia minus 10. Minus 10 you get you need to use a lens of a power minus 10 it has a focal length of 10 centimeters if you change it to a contact lens then you are adding here one and a half centimeter so you need to put a lens with its focal length 11 and a half then the power instead of having a minus 10 you're going only to need around minus 8 diopters that's why in high arrows you need to make in mind the effect of this distance while in cases of a small error it doesn't make much difference in applying contact lenses up to minus 4 diopters we are using the same power but higher than minus 4 then we depend on cables to see the effect of the distance this is known as the back distance power the back vertex power. Clinically, myope with complaint of indistinct far vision, eye strain because of the latent squint, complications like Fox spot retinal detachment, cataract, and squint. We can correct myopia by glasses, by contact lenses, or surgically. In LASIK we change the shape of the cornea to make it flatter or we can put intracorneal rings to push the cornea to the outside making the curvature of the central part flatter or we can put IOL attach it to the iris either in front of the iris or behind the iris so this is something like a contact lens but we put it inside the eye thank you for your attention